He is remembered as the last British king or monarch to have been killed on a battlefield. But James IV of Scotland reigned for a significant amount of time until he met his demise in 1513. He was a king who was rather prosperous, and his time on the throne of Scotland saw the Scottish treasury double in its profits, and he oversaw the building of a number of iconic palaces. He even introduced compulsory schooling, and despite long periods of peace inside of Scotland, King Henry VIII of England had other ideas as he would lead his troops into Scotland, and it was actually his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, who oversaw the battle that resulted in the death of King James IV. However, what happened to the Scottish king's remains following his death is rather strange, bizarre and mysterious, and the king's coffin was disturbed and opened a number of times. James IV was the son of King James III and Margaret of Denmark, and when his father was killed at the Battle of Sashburn on the 11th of June 1488, the 15-year-old James came onto the throne. James was crowned at Scone on the 24th of June, and he was quickly seen as an effective ruler. He was a man who put down rebellions well and brought other rebels into submission, and he was a very clever man who was well-educated. James IV spoke many different languages. For centuries, one of the main enemies for the Scots was the English. And there had been a conflict for hundreds of years, and James knew that the best interests for both Scotland and England were based in peace. Because of this, a treaty of peace was agreed between he and King Henry VII of England. And because of this, James IV married Margaret Tudor on the 8th of August 1503 at Holyrood Abbey in Edinburgh. It was hoped that this union of the thistle and rose would bring about successes for both nations. However, James IV was a man who took great interest in building up his arms and armies just in case. The king created Scotland's first navy, which defended against piracy in the North Sea, and he was also a man who took great interest in medicine, dentistry and other aspects of Scottish society. He consolidated the control of the crown over Scotland, and the king travelled and was seen by his subjects, and he also resolved many family disputes across his nation, and made sure that his courts were acting with justice and fairness. In all aspects, it's believed that James IV was a very good Scottish king, and he was granted the title of protector and defender of the faith by the Pope. But when King Henry VIII came onto the throne in England, relations between Scotland and England had begun to crack and deteriorate. Henry VIII was not like his father, and he was not happy to appease James, and Henry wanted Scotland to show him obedience, and he viewed them as a vassal state. Further hostility continued between the pair, and further problems were brought about as the King of Scotland renewed the old alliance with France, and with this, the English king viewed this as an act of war against him. Henry VIII later invaded France, and his soldiers defeated a French army at the Battle of the Spies, and James IV gathered the Scottish army and sent a naval fleet to help the French king's forces. The fleet attacked the English and burned down a town, but then they fought alongside the French, But with Henry VIII out of the country, King James IV decided to take the fight to the English on land also. James IV and the Scottish army, made up of around 42,000 men, crossed the River Tweed and entered England on the 22nd of August 1513. Across the border, they attacked different castles and they took up a position against the English army, which was being commanded by Thomas Howard, the Earl of Surrey. James's army had been slightly reduced due to sickness and also desertion, but it still outnumbered the English by around 8,000 troops. And his forces were equipped with decent armies, including large 18-feet pikes. There were heavily siege guns and other cannons, and the English had a large amount of archers armed with longbows. This became the Battle of Flodden, and James IV The battle began launching his artillery against the English, but his guns did not do well. At the foot of Braxton Hill, there was an area of marshy ground, and James's Scottish forces struggled to cross the ground, and they lost their formations. 
The long pikes were ditched and they were caught in close combat with the English who had better weapons. James the Fourth, however, had placed himself at the front and he was in danger and there was fierce fighting. The English declared that there would be no prisoners taken and that James the Fourth was killed in the final stages of the battle and he got close to the Earl of Surrey who was leading the army and was said to have fought within a spear's length of killing his enemy. For the Scots it was a military disaster marked by the loss of a popular and skilled king. It was the next day that the body of the Scottish king was found on the battlefield amongst the dead and his lower jaw had been pierced by an arrow and this would have stopped him in his tracks allowing the English to cut him down and slash him to pieces. His body was found with significant injuries, including an almost severed left hand and his throat had been cut. The body of the king was taken to Berwick-upon-Tweed and it was then embalmed, before it was then placed inside of a lead-lined coffin. It was sent to Sheen Priory in Surrey and the blood-stained coat of the Scottish king was sent to Henry VIII from Catherine of Aragon, his wife who had overseen the victory. Henry VIII did not allow the remains of the Scottish king to return back to his nation and instead kept it almost as a trophy of war. He obtained permission to have the Scottish king buried in St Paul's Cathedral in London, but James IV was unburied. He was held above the ground at Sheen Priory for many decades and during the dissolution of the monastery, it was claimed that the coffin of James IV was opened and that his head was then hacked from his body for some reason. The head was said to have had a sweet savour and had dried of all moisture and yet the form remaining, the hair of the head and the beard red. During the reign of King Edward VII, the coffin was shown to John Stowe and he reported that Since the dissolution of the house, I have been showed the same body so lapped in lead, thrown in an old waste room, amongst old timber stone lead and other rubble. It's almost like the remains of the Scottish king were disregarded, like litter or waste material. And Stowe reported that the head had been hacked off the Scottish king by workmen who had broken into the coffin. It was said that the master glazer of Elizabeth I had possession of James IV's head following this, and that he kept it and went as an artefact in his home in London, before he then gave it to the sexton of the local church. The head of James IV was then reburied in a charnel pit alongside many other burials in the churchyard. However, the location of the church today is lost as it was demolished and the site was redeveloped many times, leading to the conclusion that still today the head of the last British king to die in a battle lies possibly still in the ground. During these works, the head was not located, but... That leads the question as to what actually happened to the corpse of King James IV. It was left in a woodshed just rotting and the head being separated from the corpse and this was the last time the body of James IV was recorded. However, it's assumed that someone must have taken this and that somewhere the body of James was buried and it would not have been left to just rot, especially when the land was brought during the dissolution of the monasteries. He was a king who was very well liked and was well respected and it's considered that he was the most successful of the Stuart monarchs. However, King James IV died on the battlefield of Flodden and his body was subjected to a horrific ordeal in the years after. Thank you for watching and to support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.